Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to take a look at creating a product, amending the product and also adding the product to a button. So I'm already signed in at this point and um, you need to navigate to the manager screen and look for a button that's possibly called product management, product maintenance or edit product depending on how your EPOS has been set up. So edit product on this one it's purely the CES demo skin. So Straight away, it's flashing there in the PLU box. It's, it's waiting for you to put a product code in. And if you put a code in and it doesn't find it, it's offering you to create the code, uh, a new product. If obviously you use an existing code, um, it will then just populate uh, the actual product that's already in the EPOS itself. So if you create a product at this point, you could do it two different ways really. You can create a product and start from the one upwards or a thousand upwards or ten thousand upwards, whatever you want to do, or you could literally use the barcode off your products. So at this point, if you have a barcode scanner, you, you'd scan it and it will populate it in the PLU box. However, I don't have one plugged in on this EPOS and I'm remoted in anyway. So I'm just going to actually create a product. So product code number three, I'm pressing enter, obviously needing a keyboard plugged in at this point. Press yes to create the new product. It's asking you for a description of the product, and this obviously will show up on the receipt. So we can just call it um, test or something like that. Yeah? Testing one. Now, this product needs a sell price, so we'll bang it on for say £1.10. And it's costing me about uh, 0.45, as in 45 pence. So 51% margin. 47 pence profit, which is cool. Now, pricing levels, yeah? There's different pricing levels, and I will cover that in another video. So, case quantity is one, so obviously, if you want to, you can do that slightly differently, but that, again, is in stock control, and um, I will cover that in another video. Unit costs, obviously, working out how much each one is costing you, so you can work out your sale price and your profit. Uh, the case cost, obviously, depending, again, really you're going to use that in stock control. I'll cover that in another video. And average cost, obviously, depending on how much it's changed over the, the duration of the time that you've had this product on the EPOS. So the only thing that really, because we're going to keep it basic, the only thing we need to look at on this page, other than what we've just done, is literally whether it's VATable or not. So in a drop-down menu, is it standard VAT or is it basically um, VAT exempt? Normally what you'll get in your EPOS is either it's VATable or it's not VATable. Obviously, if you're selling certain products that have reduced fat, you can have a reduced fat on as well. Okay, so we'll leave it on at 20% on this occasion. Now, if you move along the tabs, there's a bunch of tabs across here. So if you go stock, now there's no point covering this. This is in st for stock control, and I will create a new video for that one. Profile tab, the profile tab, this is important because when you allocate a product to a department, or should I say, when you create a product, you must allocate to to a department and you'll see why shortly but to be honest with you you can't save it without actually allocating it to it to to a department so what we'll do is we'll, we'll put it on spirit say and preferred supplier we'll leave it on as default as standard however in stock control um, you can have it set up differently whereas you uh, you can save room reports for example that would allow you to create an order to the supplier and it would list all the products that you'd need to on a report that's been allocated to the department uh, to to the supplier by this pro product code. Again, I'll cover that in, in stock control. To be honest with you, loads of other options here. Follow one key for command lines. Again, it's not important at this particular point. We're just creating a simple product. Price shifts uh, for different days of the week or weekends. That type of thing. Happy hour, um, certain shifts, um, events. You can use price shifts. Again, um, I'll cover that in another video. Questions and condiments, same thing. Condiments is quite important, especially if it's food. So, for example, if you sell it as a panini, for example, panini or a sandwich or something, you can say sandwich, and the, the condiment could be then, you know, brown, wholemeal, white, that type of thing. Um, and then you can have the fillings, for example, if you want to. Um, so they're cost condiments that you would choose. It will give give you a choice of doing that. Again, I'll maybe cover that in another video. Um, Max discount. So if you're using a discount structure, especially for uh, staff, um, loyalty, that type of thing, you can discount the product maximum. Say, you know, you can set it, say, 20%, 30%, or 100%, or 0%, whatever you want to do, to be honest with you. 
But uh, if we move along here to comments, the comments, uh, this could be quite handy for, say, cocktails, if it was a cocktail. And you can have the ingredients in here so you know how to make it up. And especially, you can just tip the box if you like. That would only show for the training operator. Okay. Uh, suppliers, again, really for stock control. Locations, uh, stock locations, again, for stock control, really. Uh, recipes, again, really, you'd, you'd use it for stock control because, um, say, if it was a lager, for example, you would, not a lager, a uh, shandy, you could have basically uh, set up a recipe here so that it would be like say 50% lemonade, 50% lager, and you would you would choose those two PLUs, you would choose lager and or tenants or carling or something like that, and then lemonade, add it, add those two products in this list, and uh, it would reduce the stock holding so you know how much you're going through. Again, only really use it for stock control as such. Alternative PLU is uh, it could be used for a couple of things. Again, you could add it. You could add uh, the barcode at this point. You just scan the barcode right now, or you could put the supplies code in. And the idea would be is, um, for example, say you sold a box, an item, or something. Uh, so a customer had a box, but it was empty with inside. Doesn't matter what it could be. Um, and they phoned you up and said, "Can you give me another box?" And they give you the code of the manufacturer's number on the box rather than your code. And um, you could put the supplies code in here. So when you put that code into the EPOS, whether it's in here, you would actually still populate it exactly the same as if it was put in here. Same with the barcode. And you could just save it at this point. Okay. Um, now, if we go back to the profile tab, just for a second here, um, and then go into options, there is a few options in here that I'm not going to cover in this particular video. Um, the other tab is remote, um, which is... Good for restaurants, for example, cafes, um, bars, that type of thing. The idea would be is, uh, for example, if you're doing serving hot food, you could, and this was um, something hot, like steak or something, you could tell it to point it to the kitchen printer. Now what will happen is if you say on version 9, um, you could be at a table with a Microsoft Windows tablet running this software as if you're literally in front of the EPOS and open up a table number say table number five and take an order for drinks, take an order for food. Now what will happen is, is if, if it was drinks, you could allocate the, the product to the bar. And if it's food that needs to be, the chef needs to know about, you can allocate it to the kitchen. So when you store that table away, so you open up a table five, take the order, store the table. Now what will happen is the drinks order will go straight to the bar and print off on a bar printer. And the kitchen printer will print off the hot food and it would say, table five, these drinks. So whoever's serving the drinks behind the bar, see the receipt coming out, make up the drinks, walk over to the table, hand them over. And again, in the kitchen, you'll print off a receipt and you could literally make up the food and then somebody would actually go and serve it at the table. So minimal mistakes. So that's what that's for. So a uh, picture can allocate a picture to the product. And a department, um, this is where you would maybe allocate the colour. So, and I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do at this point. I'll just create the text, create the, the, the colour of the button, and I'll save it for now. When I come back, you, you'll see what I mean by this shortly. So I'll just save that for now. So product code number three, saved, exit, and then we'll go back to the sales screen, fast bar. Now, here's a button here that I made earlier, and again, I'm not going into how to create the buttons as such. So I'm just going to mend this button. Okay, so I'm pressing shift, pressing the button, and it'll come up with the command box for this button. Now we created a product called number three. So I'm going to put that in. So if I search for it, it would help if I actually put something to search first. Now, what did we call it? Testing or something like that, wasn't it? So bang in testing, finds it. There we go. Accept. Do you wish to use the PLU description for the button, which I'm covering in another video, by the way. Press yes. You can see it's changed it. You can change the color of the buttons if you say, so like to. So you can make it the text white and the button can be, say, red or something like that. Press OK. Save. But again, I cover that in another video. So when I press it now, testing one at £1.10. Now that's one way of doing it. So we create a product, allocate it to, to a department, supply is default, saved it. Then what we've done is we've we've basically edited an existing button and put the new product on. Now, if you want to know how to create allocate buttons 
and create new buttons, please watch the other video that is on my YouTube channel. Now, the other way of allocating products to departments, as in buttons, there is another way. And this is the quick way. We've created the product, we allocate it to, to a department. Now, each of these buttons are actually created by departments. So, if you remember on here, when we're on the fast buy, if I press shift, press the button, command line is three star. Three means the product code, star is basically just means you just put the product code in the command line. That's what it means. Now, if you do it the other way, press menu, and I go into um, spirits. Where is it? That's where we added it to. There's spirits. So if I press shift, the spirits, it's different. It's come up with 0106 star depart. What that means is 0106 is actually the command code for spirits. Star depart is the command. And what, the, what it means is it's saying open up a screen, right, that has products with the department 0106. So if I actually press spirits, it opens up a page with all the products that have been created and allocated to the department that's called spirits. So if I go to the second page, you'll notice that testing one has been added there. Now you notice I didn't create that I didn't create that button. It auto populated. And this is what I like about the EPOS. It's a quick way of creating and amending products and pricing. If you so want to, you can just go in, edit products, product maintenance, whatever you want to call it, edit the price, change the name of it, and it'll just change it in here as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So what I mean is, let me just come back out of there. And if I go back into spirits, so shift and spirits, 0106 is the code for spirits. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I go press close, go to the manager screen, go to edit products. And if I search for product code number three, but I'm going to search by description, and I'm just going to put testing in there. Okay, there it is there, testing one, press accept. It's come at one pound ten. You can literally just quite easily just change the pricing. Everything going up in price. That's how we change it. Margins going up slightly, nicely, but the costs have also gone up as well. So we could just say that was uh, point, say fifty now. Okay, there you go, fifty percent margin. So that's how easy it is. You can change your costs and your sell price. Now, if you want to change it by the department, remember I was telling you about the codes. So the department is spirits, but it doesn't say anything about code. But if you go to the drop down menu. You'll notice at 0106, that was the command, 0106 star depart, okay? What happens if I change it to liqueurs, 0107? Yeah, press save, exit, and then back to the menu. And if you go into spirits, you've got the second page, it's gone. It was there, wasn't it? It's gone. So we're looking for liqueurs now. Can't see it for looking. There it is. So if I press the cures. There it is. That's how easy it is to switch things around. Okay. So that's the basics. So remember, manage your screen, edit products or product maintenance. Opens up the box, and you can create your product this way. Just you can click create next if you like. And you just start from the next clear. You know the next clear one that's available to you. Just press create next, and it just comes up. Do you want to create a product? No, I don't. Okay. Now, if you want to have a look at your existing products, and uh, you can't remember the name of it or anything like that, you know, because we, we've been searching by name before, that's how we did it, you know, like testing. Yeah. But you can't remember the name of it, you can't remember the product code. You can go by group departments. Pop in here. Uh, these are basically just the groups, okay? Each department is allocated to a group. But there's obviously bar, restaurant, and default are the name of the groups. So we're going to bar. The, these are all departments, yeah? So we're going to liqueurs, and then you'll see testing one in there. And you can click on it, any one of them. So just click on there, and it'll open it up. There's the product code. There's the actual sale price. Yeah, and you can see that actually they're all populated with different price levels, but I'm not covering that today. So it's all in there. I don't think stock control's not been set up on this one. There is a happy hour price shift set up, which I will cover on another product, uh, another video. But that's the basics, that's what we're looking at today. And if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Service depth at metric.co.uk. Thanks for watching.